Yeah, well, of course, the moral majority was never the majority it was thought to be, was it? And <laughs> That's the evangelicals' said, problem, isn't it? They always round up too much, I think. Absolutely, <laughs> uh, round numbers. Uh, I mean, I, th I think Rush Dooney would, would never have been fooled by that. I, I think Rush Dooney was pretty clear that the number of people who were prepared to endorse what had to be done to live faithfully, uh, for the church to live faithfully, was always going to be a remnant. You know, and, and you know, the language of the remnant is language that floats through his writing um, in, in, I think, very considerable degrees. I think it's an interesting question, Camden, the question about how uh, influential um, Reconstruction ideas were on broader evangelicalism. In a way, we could say hardly influential at all. Because, you know, the story of 1960s, well, 1970s into the 1980s, the, the, the Christian coalition moral majority, that, that story is, is the story of a, an attempted power grab. Yeah. Right. A, a top-down effort at national reformation. We get our man into the White House, Pat Robertson, wherever it's going to be, you know, and he'll do what we want. So, you know, they get, you know, 76, Jimmy Carter, outs himself as an evangelical, raises lots of completely unfounded expectations as to what he's going to do, for example, about Roe v. Wade. Then they transfer their, you know, all of their utopian, almost millennial hopes into Ronald Reagan. What happens? The same thing all over again, different party, but the same kind of political experience. So, you know, all of these efforts to achieve Christian reformation through top-down implementation of power um, fails again, again, and again. Meanwhile, you've got Rush Dooney, Chelsea uh, Foundation, toiling away quietly uh, in, in, in California, you know, producing rafts of publications, Gary North doing the same, um, you know, little communities springing up, um, collapsing, springing up, collapsing all over different parts of, of especially the southern states. But, but some of their ideas then begin to, to creep out and to permeate into some really unusual places. Now, Julie Ingersoll, um, in her book, Christian Reconstruction, writes about this, I think, really well. And, and, and she describes how, you know, in some of the lobbying organisations in Washington, you know, the, there are shelves of Reconstructionist books um, sitting there um, um, ready to be used. Um, I remember back in the late 1990s when I was you know, collecting a lot of this material, I found in another second-hand bookshop in Scotland uh, a copy of one of Gary North's books about economics, which had inside it a, a book plate that said it had it had belonged, or perhaps even maybe it still did belong, uh, to the Royal Bank of Scotland. I have no wow. idea how books get from you know a, a bank collection yeah. into a second-hand bookshop. But anyway, you know there it was, and I've still got it. So you know Gary North's books, um, you know in the Royal Bank of Scotland, um, other books in, in lobbying organisations. But really, you know, Reconstructionist ideas do begin to make an impact on evangelicalism through Francis Schaeffer. And Francis Schaeffer um, has a relationship with R.J. Rostuni's work that is difficult to be precise about. <laughs> but there is certainly, I mean, there are certainly chunks of Rostuni yeah. that appear in, that appear in, in Schaeffer's work. Now, in, in some ways, that's ironic because Schaeffer wasn't post-millennial; he was pre-millennial. And um, than Rostuni ever was Rostuni in his Christian Manifesto, uh, the need for for Christian citizens to resist the state from time to time. Rostuni doesn't go down that route at all. He's much more interested in retreating um, in order to survive instead of trying to conquer America by military force. And you know, I suppose one thing you could say that that Rostuni. Um, was trying to teach American evangelicals that they might not have been listening to was that the transformation of the individual through regeneration has to come before the transformation of families, of localities, of counties, of states, and then ultimately federal government itself. But the, the Reconstructionist vision is very much bottom in the 80s. I think probably also to the present.